Hello, everybody. How's it going? Um, I'm going to be testing threat fire tonight because I said I would do so. Um, threat fire is a great program to back up your antivirus or internet security if it doesn't have a module kind of like HIPS or a real good behavior blocker. Threat fire is a free utility that will uh, it has kind of a a virus scanner in it to a certain degree because it can de detect threats and files but it's also a program that will question you a second time whether you actually want to run a file it will also tell you if a file is trying to modify um, operating system files or the registry or add startup items so let's take a look at the interface here I get shown the uh, latest threats, adware threats and where they are. I can look at my protection status. Uh, I can show me what's dangerous or what's been blocked. And right here it tells me what's what kind of attention is required. So let's run a smart update. And while it applies the updates, I'm not going to run a scan because I know this is clean. I'm going to be testing this against 12 URLs I just pulled up. Uh, you can start a scan with it. They say it can scan for rootkits and everything. I don't find it's the best rootkit removal tool, um, but that's fine. And so here you control denied or allowed programs, quarantine programs, or you can look at your protection logs. We look at advanced tools. You can set up custom rules. You can also look at your system activity and like Explorer EXE I could kill. That would be a great idea. And sensitivity level here. You can have this wherever you want. You can have it anywhere from 1 to 5. 5 is going to be pretty noisy. 3 is going to be, you know, if you don't need much protection. 4 is just right if you are using an antivirus and you want something to really help back you up. All right. Um, nothing here. We don't. We don't have to look at anything there. And the upgrade now is for. Oops, sorry. For if you want to get the uh, thing with the uh, full version with customer support, uh, it's also you can use it for business. Whereas this is for home users only. So let's take a look and start going for some malware here. So, on my internet, I have Internet Explorer 8, I believe, and I'm going to test some malware here. Alright, so let's open up my, uh, first let's bring up Google here, and I am going to, oops. I am going to change my home page for Google. All right. So let's take my malware here and let's start pasting some of this in. All right. So the other thing I didn't say I was going to do just to show as uh, I'm going to be testing Internet Explorer and threat fire today. That's one thing I forgot to say uh, because I figured I could do both and show threat fire as a backup and show Internet Explorer as the active antivirus, which it really isn't, but Internet Explorer 8 is the most secure browser in my opinion because it blocks downloads. So it found this download is unsafe. If Internet Explorer blocks all of these, I will have to turn off smart screen filter and show you what threat fire does. Yeah, because right here you're seeing that Internet Explorer is a really amazing browser, Internet Explorer 8, just in the sense that, aha, here we go. So now it crashes. All right, never mind. I was getting my hopes up in everything that we'd get to use ThreatFire. This uh, should be... A file. All right, that's too bad. Uh, 
All right. All right. Threat fire has detected a potential threat. So this is what threat fire will say if your antivirus misses something. Um, this program is attempting to copy an executable file to a sensitive area of your system. This file will perform an action or s or a set of actions on your computer if the copy completes. File activity details. Let's take a look. Um, program actions, file actions. So it's trying to create this file here, which is not a file we want. I'm not sure what this is showing. I think it's showing me that this is files that it was trying to create. That wouldn't make sense. All right. So it blocks this. You can either allow. This is when you need to know what you're doing. You either allow the process to continue. OK, I want to install it. Proceed. No. I'm going to kill and quarantine the process just because I know what I'm doing. And I got a second chance to check that out and make sure that's what I really wanted to do. All right. Well, as you see, uh, Internet Explorer's like. getting most of the stuff. And what Internet Explorer doesn't get, Threat Fire doesn't have to work on because the files crash. That's the best kind of malware, the kind of malware that crashes and doesn't do anything. Alright, here we go again. The, it's trying to copy itself to another location. We're going to kill and quarantine the process and the computer is now secure again. All right, and again, it's not so high. It's trying to connect to the internet in a suspicious or unexpected manner. So let's see what it says about this. It says... All right. It doesn't say much uh, that... It doesn't say much that means much, but that's what it did right there. It was trying to connect to the internet and apparently modify files and trying to hurt this computer more than I want it hurt. And in essence, you can protect your computer entirely with something like threat fire. Although if you made a mistake, you have suddenly hurt your computer like I just almost allowed the process just because I wasn't thinking about it that's just good proof of what can happen if you're not paying attention and you might be wondering you know you're not giving it a good test you're not letting it see all the files but I am giving it a good test because it will pop up for any file that you download that tries to do anything other than just run. So in essence, no matter what file gets through, you're still going to get a threat fire pop up. Wow. I have some epic fail files tonight. All right, great. Thanks for watching. So that was a, a good test. And if we look under threat fire here, and we see system uh, protection status. You can see it blocked four things. So that's great. So Internet Explorer and Threadfire, you can pretty much prevent malware uh, without using many system resources. And you can do a really great job um, staying secure. Now you throw in an antivirus to that mix, and you've pretty much fried any potential malware. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.